Welcome to Laguna Wood Stories. This is the show where you meet interesting people who live here in Laguna Woods and to hear something of their life stories. And boy, do we have a story for you today. <laughs> <laughs> this is Carol Glenn, uh, formerly known as Carolyn Brandt. Yes. And uh, uh, she was once known as the Queen of Cults. Uh, B-movies, yes. <laughs> yeah, cult, definitely. As uh, I was just back to Cinema Wasteland in uh, September, celebrating a lot of the various cult movies that uh -huh. come all the time. Okay. We're going to find out uh, more about that. You may have uh, read about her in a story in, in The Globe, mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, but, but how does a, uh, a person get into this kind of business? And let's start at the very beginning. Where were you born and where did you go to school? Oh, okay. Well, I was born in New York City and I lived there for about two years. Okay. My mother got mad at my father. She packed up and came out to the West Coast. Hmm. My grandfather was And you were how old at this point? About, I guess, two. I really don't have many memories until I was about three, and we had rented wow. a home up in Berkeley. My grandfather was designing the victory ships for Kaiser right. for World War II. Right. And my first memory is riding a tricycle around the ballroom in this lovely uh, manor up in the Be Berkeley Hills. Oh, okay. And you went to school? Did you live in California then? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, from the time we moved, uh, there we were first in Berkeley and then across the bay to San Francisco. Uh -huh. And I, my grandfather took a look at the various schools, and it was a tie between Sarah Dix Hamlin and the Convent of the Sacred Heart. Oh, wow. And at that time, he said, the nuns have the better books. She goes to the convent. I see. And that's what I did. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that was a, what, a grade school, high school equivalent? Uh, it was grade and high school. Uh -huh. Lovely old building. It was the old flood mansion up 2222 Broadway in Pacific Heights. Okay. Uh, did you go on to college or? Uh, what happened was my stepfather said, I was still in grammar school at the time. Oh, no, 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 it was, it was now junior high. Uh, he, he was in sales. He said, she goes to Elizabeth Holloway School of the Theater to, to study diction. Well, if you went there for one class, you took a lot of different classes, and mm. the acting class was there, and it was mm. fun. Mm. So I started doing that, and that next summer, let's see, it was high school, uh, went down to the Pasadena Playhouse for the summer oh. session. Oh, wow. One of the other kids who was there was also from San Francisco, and he was involved in children's theater and a couple of the other groups. Uh -huh. So he said, well, get involved. So I came back home to San Francisco and uh, joined the Abbott Abrams workshop, and we did lovely plays. Well, we did Mr. Roberts, hmm. uh, oh, There Shall Be No Night, and the one that upset the nuns was called Dark of the Moon. It hmm. happens about some witch people in the Appalachians, and there's a lot of prejudice, and the one young woman gets involved with the witches, and so there's, to save her, there's a, a rape during the church service, hmm. and the nuns called my mother in because I was involved in this oh dear. supposed, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then we wound up uh, moving down to Hollywood. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. oh. And I finished my last year at Immaculate Heart High School and got involved with a, a Shakespearean group, David Bond, who was a, a character actor in the movies, had this delightful group and his partner, John Angelo, was into dance, and I had started doing a little bit of dance, uh -huh. and uh, uh -huh. so we just started doing Shakespeare productions that we would offer to the colleges, primarily at that time it was readings, and then Johnny uh, were working on some different shows, uh, dance performances around the uh, community. How, I'm trying to remember, I got involved with, um, a TV pilot called The Magic of Sinbad. Hmm. Tommy Reddick was Sinbad, and 
I got to be one of the dancing girls. Wow. So. And, and you would have been about how old at that point? Uh, 18. Okay. Okay. 17, 18. And. So by the time you're 18, you have years of, of theater uh, experience. Well, in about three years, yeah. about three years at that time. The dance I had just started to pick up a year or so before that, uh -huh. although I'd always wanted it. I never got that in San Francisco, but in L.A. I did. Hmm. So wow. then I was in the magic of Sinbad on a magic carpet, hmm. and the man who became my husband, Ray Steckler, was, uh, walked in and saw me up there on a flying carpet. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it makes for a good, how did you two meet? That's right. how we met. <laughs> yeah. you, were, you flew in on your magic carpet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that should impress almost anybody. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so mm -hmm. how did you go from there to to a, a career or, uh, in, in, uh, in the horror genre? Well, Hollywood has always been a little uh, difficult to navigate when you're a female. And <laughs> a lot of the guys had problems too. Uh, I was starting to encounter that. I remember I went for a commercial, it was a billboard commercial, and it was, it's between me and this other girl and she will go to bed with me. Mm. And I said, well, I guess she gets the part. Wow. And uh, I, I just got very uncomfortable. I would think. And Ray was, uh, had been doing eight millimeter films as a kid back in Pennsylvania. Mm. And that was his dream. And I've, we got together and I said, well, if I've got to sleep with the director, I might as well be married to him. <laughs> so I guess that's how I got into horror films. Okay. <laughs> so, so this was his vision. Uh, uh, he no, just wanted with. to do whatever film he could do. Uh -huh. And his desire was to get uh, with Roger Corman at AIP, and he tried several times, but it never clicked. Uh -huh. So we just started doing these on our own, more or less. Uh, almost all of the films we did were 16 millimeter, okay. and sometimes with short ends, which means you you pick up, you don't have a full loaded roll of film. You've got these bits that were left over from mm -hmm. other uh, productions. Which you buy for cents on the dollar, I'm sure. So. To so, yes, <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, and they, and they may run a minute or they may run eight minutes or something. Okay. Which was part of my training. We didn't, we could not afford to waste film. Mm -hmm. I would get uh, chastised if we had to do a second take. Oh, oh, really? And unfortunately, one of the films that we did, The Thrill Killers, they're chasing me. And the first time they're chasing me, I escaped because I ran faster than uh, the one guy. <laughs> and we had to go back and reshoot it. Or you'd have to rewrite it. <laughs> well, it wouldn't have worked as well if I had gotten away. No, probably not. <laughs> uh, we have you brought some pictures of, mm -hmm. of your uh, years in the in the horror film uh, genre. So, uh, uh, oh uh, yes. What are we looking at here? Well, that is a banner that. Aaron Obishon from Webster University put together for me when I went back to Cinema Wasteland. Aaron was asked to do a lot of the narration on the 10 disc set that Severn Productions put out just this last year. Hmm. Uh, all of the assorted films that we had done and some that I wasn't in uh, in latter years. But that's that's why that's it. And we have Thrill Killers and Creatures is the big famous one. That's the one we actually had a little bit of a budget for. Mm -hmm. Blood Shack or the <clears throat> Choopers up there in the corner. And down below is a scene from B Movie. And that's from um, Rat Fink and Boo Boo. And that's <laughs> from Thrill Killers. And the legs over there, well, that's the classic shot of me from creatures that I believe Vilmo Sigmund shot that particular still. We were very lucky in those days. We had 
Vilma Sigmund and Laszlo Kovacs had just come over from Hungary. Both of them have gone on to win uh, Academy Awards for their camera work. Wow. And they always said that Ray was a cameraman's cameraman. Oh. He, he showed them things to do, like shooting flares, shooting into the sun, that uh, they had not had experience with. Uh, uh -huh. And I remember he put Willie on skates and shoved him out onto the ice rink when they were shooting Wild Guitar, and he had him do the full circle shot around the young lovers on the ice, which was kind of a steal from on the beach. Mm -hmm. So, uh, by that means you got uh, really high level uh, camera. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah, much, much more than you would expect to have on a, on a B-movie, right? Absolutely. Well, on Creatures, the actual DP was Joe Michelli, who wrote the American Cinematographer's Manual. Ah, so that was really? top rated. And then you had, uh, we called him Billy at that time because when they first came over from Hungary, Billy and Leslie were trying to integrate into America. Mm. And so we had Billy on camera and Leslie as his backup. Wow. Let's move on to our next uh, slide. Oh, uh, yeah. here, here you are in the modern day, but you're holding a picture. What's that up? That's the uh, shot of me as the nightclub dancer in The Incredibly Strange Creatures Who Stopped Living and Became Mixed Up Zombies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the picture that sold out most at Cinema Wasteland. Uh -huh. it's, it's the classic shot everybody seems to go to. And as I said, I believe, as I remember, that Vilmos was the one who took that particular shot. Mm. Okay, next? Next. Oh, <laughs> what fun. <laughs> uh, this was The Lemon Grove Kids was a series that uh, was a takeoff on the old Bowery Boys. Oh, yes. Because Ray at that time looked very much like Hunts Hall. <laughs> so we, we had uh, all of our kids were in these, were the Lemon Grove Kids. We were then living on Lemon Grove Avenue which is where the name came from. And that particular shot is with Kogar, the gorilla. Okay, what do we have next? Let, what, oh, this is the famous one from last, origi uh, yes, last original B movie. I'm Carrie Erskine, this sinister character who's stolen stuff from the guy, the MacGuffin. Hmm. And I, I made that outfit. It was, I found the fabric and I thought, oh, this will be fun. It'll be kind of interesting. So, so not only were you uh, acting, but you were. I did the makeup. I did the costuming. I would, uh, in that particular one, I remember I was keeping the script. Uh, so, uh, when I'm sitting there, there at the uh, table, I have the script in a drawer. And as we're doing it, <laughs> we're finished. I pull open the drawer and I make my notations. Right. <laughs> because we were also, we, we were making these things low budget, no money. So we both worked for NABIT and would do a work on commercial productions for Lori. I was lucky. I was doing uh, costuming and makeup and script supervision. Wow. And, and uh, somehow these got distributed and, and uh, sort of made a living out eventually, of it. Eventually, <laughs> no. No, no, we you rarely. Did not make uh, a, uh, no, uh, Ray would go to these uh, Friday night or Saturday night monster fest, and sometimes, as with creatures, uh, the, there were creatures that would break into the theater and stomp around, and oh. they had these masks <laughs> that had been made that uh, the guys would wear. I, I heard about that. I stayed home with the girls. Hmm. <laughs> so it was. Uh, to go back to the gorilla, it was gorilla filmmaking. Uh, oh, <laughs> yes, you could say that. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's uh, mm -hmm. uh, go to the next one. Oh, there uh, we are. Here, here you are in different views. Yes, that's, uh, and I think Ray had done those stills. I know the one is, uh, the middle one is from Blood Shack, and the end one was from Last Original B Movie. Ah. And I, I, I get confused sometimes because he would change the title. He would recut the film uh -huh. and change the title. Uh -huh. So many of our films are floating around under different names. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are, have been done in Spanish. And I've got a couple of those 
po copies of the posters at home. Are some of these on YouTube? Good question. Hmm. Okay. I know the Q and A that I did from Cinema Wasteland is on uh, YouTube, uh -huh. and that can give you a little more additional information as to how we did all this crazy stuff. Uh, the name Carolyn Brandt. Uh, where did that come from? That was my grandfather's mother's name. Oh, I Carolina see. Carolina Brandt, and it, we went to that because I was born Carol Glenn. I took my stepfather's name, Carol Flynn, and Ray said, you can't use that, it sounds too much like Errol Flynn. Oh, yes. So I said, okay, well, I want to stay with the family, so then Carolina Brandt was, well, there Carolyn go. Brandt. There we go, okay. Next slide. Uh -oh. oh, the Chooper. Ray had gotten the opportunity to do a TV pilot in Vegas. Ah, wow. So we packed up everything and moved to Vegas. I was very uh, not thrilled because I was getting a very nice career going in the union doing makeup, wardrobe, and script. Mm. But we packed up and we went up there. And then uh, we shot Blood Shack out in Pahrump when there was really nothing in Pahrump except, as Ron says in the movie, acres and acres of nothing, just dust and, <laughs> and wind. If you're looking for nothing, that's the place. Right? <laughs> it was at that time. But that was back in uh, 1970 when we shot that. Hmm. So there was definitely, oh, so much has changed up Did there Did anything since come, then. Uh, come of that? Not really. It was as bu about as low budget as you can get. Yeah. Although now, with Severn having put out this ten disc set, they recaptured a lot of this. They they found uh, one of the backers who had passed away had a bunch of the stuff sitting oh. in his garage, and his daughter said, "Oh, come take it." Negative, that sort of thing. Yeah, the, the negatives, some of the uh, the full movies. Yeah, it would have been the, the negatives. Hmm. And wow. so Severin Productions uh, got all that together. So it may have, yeah, a new mm -hmm. a new life. Huh? Yeah. yeah, I didn't get any money out of it, <laughs> <laughs> but we, you know, we're just kind of happy that it did surface again. You like to think that it didn't molder away in a yeah. closet yeah. somewhere. Well, so often what. What we do and get excited about in 10 years, there's no sign of it, so. Well, so. It was, uh, and that was, it was such a lovely experience because Ray had gone to many uh, presentations over the years. Only once did he ask me to go, and that was uh, showing up in Sacramento, and I think that was Rat Fink a Boo Boo. And, it was fun. I got to feel like a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what fun. Okay, what's next? Oh, Thrill Killers. That was probably the best simple dramatic show. And there's Gary Kent over there in the corner. Gary Kent was a very well-known stuntman who is still alive. Hmm. He's in Texas now. But they did a movie about Gary called Danger God. And that movie was the background for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the movie that DiCaprio uh, made. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. So, uh, you, your, your career was not all in Hollywood, but, but you, uh, was a significant part of it was, so you, so you made a lot of contacts there. And, and, a few. Yeah. yeah it, most of the films that we did were in Hollywood. We did um, Blood Shack and the Las Vegas Strangler meets the Skid Row Slasher. Those are the ones that I was involved with, mm -hmm. and those were in Vegas. But by that time, our careers were going in different directions, and things were changing. I wound up going back to, I went, say, going back, I took one university class, which you'd asked me about, at LACC when I was pregnant with my older daughter. I decided uh, I would never get anywhere in a normal job without a college degree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I went to UNLV uh -huh. and it was 
it was a good time for me. I, I did the four years in two and a half because I couldn't afford <laughs> to take four years of my life to try to uh, get the degree. So I right. plowed through and grabbed every scholarship I could lay my hands on. Wow. I, I was very lucky. Well, I, I love learning. And it was just the perfect, and I was ready for it. Yeah, it was just yeah. perfect timing. So I, I got through and uh, got out there. It went uh, out of showbiz into uh, financial consulting. I worked with Prudential Beige. Really? We did muni bonds for the state of Nevada and uh, huh. all of the uh, various cities. Wow. Yeah. So, so I, I really, <laughs> I, got, I say I went legit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, your, your college years were made easier for you by the fact that I guess that all, all your filmmaking years, you learned to live on nothing. Yeah. And, and, and that's a great skill to have when you're going to college. Going to college, on nothing. yes. But uh, it must have been quite a, quite a change in your life to work in the financial area where presumably they paid you a regular yeah, well, yes, I got it for the first time in my life. I think I got a real salary. <laughs> wow. Yes. Oh, this is what it's like to work. <laughs> hmm. And I went over and started volunteering for United Blood Services as a volunteer coordinator because I'd coordinated everything on these movies for years. Sure. And before I knew it, uh, I was on the payroll, and then they said, oh, we'd like you to be the executive director. There's a problem down in Texas. And off I went. Wow. I really enjoyed Texas. The, hmm. What they say about Texas friendly, and I would drive sometimes a couple of hours to get to one of our outlying centers. And it'd be beautiful, just miles and miles of bluebells. Lady uh, Bird Johnson uh -huh. had pushed for the right. uh, flowers to be all over, and it worked beautifully. So you've had a very varied uh, uh, career. Uh, uh, you started out, obviously, with a lot of interest in, in acting, mm -hmm. and, and your career, early career was, was in acting as well as coordinating. And dancing. So, and so throughout all of your career, were you, were you in community theater and, and other things, or did you sort of put that on the shelf for a while? Uh, once I got into the career, it really went on the shelf for a long time. All but that's what brought me to Laguna Woods. Very happily, I've been here since 2008. Wow. And your uh, interest in theater. Oh, yes. Uh, has been revitalized since you, you, you've been involved with, uh, what, uh, both theater groups? or Absolutely. I have to say the uh, who really started me down our slippery slope here was Sheila Bialco. Yes. Sheila, uh, I was... Uh, well, she walked up to me one day down at the PAC, which was then Clubhouse 3, and said, you're my share. <laughs> I looked at her, you, you want me to audition? She said, no, you're my share. So she, it was one of our uh, magic jukebox, that's what we were doing. And Tony Barr and I were Sonny and Cher. Oh. And that was so much fun. We lipped sync to Sonny and Cher. We had the wardrobe. I remember the first time we had done it up at Clubhouse 5, we walked out onto the stage, the music is playing, and people are applauding, and I said, this is what it's like to be a star. <laughs> but you'd so already been a star, but in front of the movie camera, you don't know. Oh, we don't know. <laughs> you Nobody don't, tells you. Don't get you. Any feedback. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love going to Cinema Wasteland. All of a sudden, they're saying, oh, you are. But this was my first experience, thanks to Sheila, was walking on Clubhouse 5 and people applauding before I did anything. Wow. <laughs> and then it hopefully, was lip syncing. <laughs> I was going to say, hopefully they applauded afterward, too. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> Uh, that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what are some of the things you have done here besides uh, uh, being share? Oh well, I've been very blessed to be in a number of shows. I was Laura in the stage production of Laura. I've had a chance to dance in several of the productions. Sometimes as a soloist, sometimes with Linda, who uh, we we did the. Uh, one of my favorite numbers, All That Jazz. Oh, yes. And we've had so much fun oh, doing jazz. that yeah. one. Yeah. And uh, then, again, thanks to Sheila, she said, 
want you to start directing. So she had me sit in on a show that we did. It was uh, segments of Neil Simon's various suites, oh, yeah. Plaza Suites, uh, California Suites, London Suites, and she had me start by directing one of the scenes. And since then, I found out I could do it, right. and I enjoyed doing it. Because you had done a lot of the functions of directing uh, when you were doing films years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you're low budget, you have to coordinate and think of all of these things. So it, it's just automatic. You know, the, the mind's going back there. Yeah. I've got to have this done and that done. And uh, for me, uh, it's very easy as an actor to uh, see the person and work with them. One example is somebody I work with on one of the radio shows. Perfect character, wasn't getting the, the gist of the character. We just sat there and talked about what was going on in that character's head. Mm. It wasn't line readings, it's mm. this is what the person's thinking right uh -huh. now. Uh -huh. And it worked. Yeah. I was so <laughs> thrilled. <laughs> now we're almost out of time, but okay. uh, what's uh, what are, what are you doing right now and what's next? Oh, what I'm doing right now, this February 8th, we will have the first Old Pros new meeting on uh, the second Wednesday of the month, which is February 8th, at Clubhouse 7. But we will now be there with doors opening at 6 and the show going up at 6.30. And this one is one that, it's a pastiche. I put together uh, some songs, some skits, some limericks, and just, it's going to be a fun, happy show uh, called Hearts. Some happy, some broken. Okay. And I hope everybody gets to come and see that because it will be delightful. Now, you're, what would you like to do? What, what's... Oh. What would be your dream? Oh, that's a big question. What is my dream? I'm so happy right now. I have the love of my life in my life. Mm -hmm. We're The same thing goes for him. And that's a big part of just enjoying that right now. But I do want to see our theater groups continue to grow. The pandemic took a big hit. Yeah. And we have not had a lot of fresh faces. And there's so many new people who have come into the community during the pandemic that I'm really hoping that they step up and come in. We try to e-blast and let people know when there is an audition coming up and that come on down, you know, whether you've mm. had experience or not. And some people have done college theater or community theater and never thought about it. But I found out something when I was teaching yoga. I told the ladies, try it. You never know <laughs> if you're going to like something until you give it a try. Mm -hmm. You will either find out that you absolutely love it and you have something brand new. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like it, fine, you cross it off your list and go on to the next Haven't thing. Haven't lost much. And you'll find what you really want to do by doing that. Carol Glenn, uh, such an interesting life, so many different aspects, and uh, such a, a, a vivacious uh, person on oh. screen and <laughs> on you. stage and on television, as it turns out. So uh, thank you for sharing with us today. Oh, my pleasure, Tom. Thank you for asking me.